Beggars can't be choosers, but beggars never quit. Height here, and you already know what this is. It's time for choosing beggars. Let's do it. Our first one is from Slinkyville. Supportive roommate needed. Are you a compassionate person with a great sense of humor who enjoys cooking and looks for ways to encourage independence by developing daily routines and skills in those around you? If so, we're looking for a supportive roommate to share Blank's apartment, Blank, with a 25 years old young man who has Down syndrome. A little bit about Blank, 25 year old fun loving man, enjoys meeting new people, going into the community, sporting events, likes video games. As a roommate, you would be helping Blank with the following, planning and preparing healthy meals, encouraging exercise and setting fitness goals, monitoring and reminding him to take his prescribed medications, transport him to some appointments and social activities, support basic housekeeping, keeping the house neat, safe, and enjoyable, assist with doing laundry, schedule events and Zoom calls, church and club meetings, and online community activities, act quickly in case of emergency, more importantly, you would be a friend who would help build a trusting relationship, improve the quality of life for yourself and those around blank, and support your new friend with him maintaining dignity and safety. Blank works best with a person who is calm, compassionate, trustworthy, and service-minded. Please note that this role is compensated in the form of free rent. Requirements. It is important whoever lives with blank to be willing to learn, give honest feedback, have good time management skills, be punctual, and have outstanding communication and interpersonal skills. Valid driver's license, have a reliable car, able to drive, current insurance, must pass criminal background and motor vehicle check, sign state waiver for compensation, must be COVID vaccinated, no pets, no smoking, 420, and no alcohol. Please write me a paragraph of why you deserve to live with an amazing person like blank. I understand those who have mental disabilities definitely need someone to look after them, but this kind of ad right here, it's almost as if they're not leaving the person any time to have a job of their own or anything like that. So while they are getting free rent, they're effectively going to be stuck as the caregiver full time. This next one is by Pops Poop Sock. Fire! Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Let's work. Bet. Let's do it. Let's make this happen. What are you thinking? Send me clothing to promote my fans so they shop with you. For sure, man. I'll send you a few shirts. Let me know what shirts you like. It says everything you have is out of stock. Yeah, right now I'm in the process of moving in a few weeks, so I haven't made this batch of shirts yet. I do have the materials to make them, so I can print some for you this weekend. Let me know what shirts you want and I'll update the website stock so you can order them. Sends pick. Sends another pick. And a final pick. Bet man, check the website now. It's going to ask for a password because I don't want other people buying them right now. The password is early 22. Able to order them? I don't do that. Huh? Did you want them for free? Forgive me if I'm wrong, but dude, it's not cool to use your influence to get free shit from small startup brands. I checked your comments and saw you did the same thing to other brands. You also haven't posted any promo pics for them, that, so I doubt you'd get them either. Also, 90% of your comments are fake, so I wouldn't even get any real exposure. I could be wrong, man, but it really seems like you're trying to scam small businesses and that's not cool. I don't think they really liked being called out, but considering they didn't come back, they already knew you saw right through them and they weren't going to be able to use their influence on you. This next one is from Dan the Man 622 Would be interested, but extremely overpriced for a MLM. It retails for $1,100 plus tax, so $1,170, and besides the tiny rash spot on the bottom, it is otherwise in mint condition. I'm also asking less than half price of the hard case due to the surface scratches. I think my asking price is pretty fair. Thanks, Dan. 
You keep it then. Thanks anyway. Metal parts and pickup magnets on these guitars are made from recycled pop cans, and the wood is the inferior wood left over from the true USA made fenders. Find a fool to sail it to for you asking. Not interested. Okay, will do. It's what they're selling for on Reverb and eBay, so I'm not sweating it. Cheers. Sends link. Used. Mass produced. Worth half its brand new price. 575. Not interested. God bless. I work at a Fender authorized dealer. I'm aware of what these sell for. Thanks though, and good luck in your search. Reverb.com is dealers trying to raise prices. They don't like Craigslist because it was destroying their high askings. People who use Reverb.com as a price guide is letting the greedy dealers destroy Craigslist, my friend. But you keep it. I've played the JH Strat from MLM and they suck. You're currently free to believe what you like, however divorced from reality it may be. I can't help but wonder why you were ever interested in my guitar that you have apparently played and are convinced sucks in the first place, but hey, whatever floats your boat, my guy. Just reaching out to Mr. Greed. I find the word greed carries much less weight coming from a cheapskate. I hope the rest of your day is as pleasant and productive as this conversation has been. Cheers, Daniel. I like how they kept it respectable, stuck to their guns, and just reinforced to the beggar why they were selling it for the price they were and why the beggar was wrong. And if there's anything we all know, it's the fact that beggars don't like to be wrong because they think they're always right. And our final one is by LittleFox7. A few years ago, a very close friend of both me and my husband was about to get married. He and his now wife were about to get married. My husband was the best man, and the groom wanted some big fancy bachelor party in Vegas, which is very far away and obviously expensive. Husband obliged and tried to make it a fun trip, even though money wasn't flush. We could afford some stuff, but dropping thousands of dollars on someone else's party was a bit excessive for us. At this point, it's worth mentioning that I'm a professional calligrapher. A few months before the wedding, the bride texts me and asks if I'll let her all the chalkboard signs for the wedding. I have a firm policy that I don't do my work skills for free, but I'll often give sweetheart rates to my friends and family if I want, or I'll find another way to be helpful. I had even offered months before to do custom wax seals for their invitations, but they ended up getting shitty cheap plastic stick-on seals instead of taking me up on my offer. Not gonna lie, after this wild fight, I cackled like a gremlin when they arrived in the mail and were all kinds of chewed up and looked like garbage. Anyway, I responded to her saying I'd be happy to do it and we could discuss my rates to figure out something that worked for their budget. I also suggested an alternative, offering to connect them with a letterer in their city with the understanding that I'd cover the costs as a gift. My friend, the groom, got all kinds of pissy with me. And I know the bride was as well, but she wasn't the one directly addressing me. Basically, they took it as a personal insult that I said no. The groom then texted me saying he's disappointed I would do this considering how much time and money he sunk into my wedding. To my knowledge, he bought a suit as a groomsman and helped my husband get ready, bought a gift, the usual stuff. As far as I know, he didn't go above and beyond. Then he tried to contact my husband and strong arm him into pressuring me to do the work. My husband told me what he said and started applying soft pressure, not wanting to rock the boat or be caught in the middle. I was furious at this point, seeing that our friend clearly didn't respect my time or very basic boundaries. And I, unlike my husband, was more than happy to rock the boat. I stuck to my guns. My husband and I both explained to the groom that we were more than happy to pay for the services for the wedding, lettering chalkboards, renting the getaway car, or something else. I just wouldn't do this one thing for free. This was a few years ago, and while they are still in our lives, this particular event has greatly soured my relationship with them. I've never truly forgiven their entitlement and tantrum at not getting their way. I mean honestly, what's the point of asking a yes or no question when it's really just masking a demand? Edit. A few people have asked why I would offer to pay instead. 
To clarify, I lived far away and couldn't do the work ahead of time. I don't want to create work that is subpar and I didn't want to be rushed into doing several signs which would have taken me at least 4 or 5 hours. And because I was happy to contribute but not willing to cram in hours of work after driving across the country, I offered to hire a local calligrapher I knew so the artist could get the work, I could contribute to the wedding, and my friends could have beautiful chalkboard lettering. I thought it was more than fair because they were able to get what they wanted to be done nicely and I could get what I wanted, which was not to do it. In my eyes, a win-win. And that's besides the point. As I said, I have a hard line about this kind of thing anyway. As some have pointed out, it's a slippery slope in the creative fields. Once you do free work for one friend's wedding, more will follow saying, But you did it for them, why won't you do it for me? I don't want to go down that road, so I don't. It's my professional boundary. The fact that you actually have that boundary, and it's not just a boundary of words where you say it's a boundary, the fact that you stick to it shows a lot, and I know it does not make choosing beggars happy when somebody has boundaries like this, but at the same time for your own sanity, without them, you'd end up just being taken advantage of. I'm really glad you stuck to your guns. Alright, that's enough beggars for the day. Well that wraps up this episode of Choosing Beggars. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.